What's up guys, I'm Ben from Authentech and I've been on Android for years, even way back when the G1 first came out, that's where Android all began. I've tinkered with iPhone and iOS here and there over the years, I've had an iPad mini, but I've never stuck with iPhone as a daily driver. Well, the new iPhone XS came out, I picked one up for the dirty penny of $1,250, I officially switched and put my SIM into the iPhone to use it as my daily driver, to stick it out as long as I could, see how long I could last. Well, it's been three weeks now, and yes, there are some things that I've come around to love, but man, there are just so many quirks and complaints and wishlist items I have, I can't stand that iOS system, and I just have to switch back to an Android. So before we jump into the complaints, let's cover what iPhone and iOS does really well. First, iPhone device, their hardware, and specifically that camera, man, oh man, it is so nice. As many people point out, it better look and feel premium since you're paying at top dollar, which granted, that is very true. That camera system at 4K 60 FPS, HDR, it's produced some really beautiful shots which I've used in my Instagram and YouTube content over the weeks. The camera is amazing. Transferring photos and videos back and forth between my iMac and the iPhone, it's so seamless with AirDrop. Same goes with texting from a computer. Now these things are possible from an Android and iMac, it's just not built in. And remember, I don't hate Apple. I've had iMacs and MacBooks for years and I really enjoy the Mac OS system. However, it's the iOS system that just irks me. This is honestly one of the key reasons why people stick with iPhone, because of that whole Apple ecosystem and how well it works with each other, right? Unfortunately, once they get you through the door, you're locked in pretty tight. The display, even though I hate that notch, it really has a gorgeous HDR display. It gets super bright and vibrant, has this fantastic ambient light sensor with smooth auto white balance and brightness levels. The dual speakers actually sound pretty good and semi well-rounded for one being downward facing. I love that physical mute switch and huge kudos to OnePlus for adopting the same idea, but then the other guys haven't caught on yet, I'm not sure why. Face unlock seems pretty fast and I sort of like that double tap power button to face ID to download an app, but then on a side note, is there seriously no way to disable the locking down of even free apps? I couldn't find that anywhere. The gestures and swipes, man, those animations are super smooth. And even though Android is catching up in some areas, that's what Apple is known for, right? Elegant, beautiful design, an easy way to navigate, swiping through apps. I found even the animations like in Google Maps way nicer in iOS over Android, doesn't make sense. Just watch as I flick this picture away, either in this direction or over here. These pleasant little animations are sometimes lost over on Android's side. This measuring app with augmented reality is super slick. I found myself using it all the time. The 3D touch on quick toggles like the flashlight dimmer and quick timer are super slick. I love the built-in screen recorder app. I've used that a ton. I can't believe Android doesn't have this yet. Okay, okay, so that's enough positives. Let's jump into the negatives, my wish list items, and why I have to switch back to Android. And let me acknowledge right off the bat, Android has been far from perfect over the years. They've had some rough beginnings, laggy devices, sort of ugly design, but they've come a far way. And I sort of feel bad because I feel like a lot of people out there tried Android in their early years, got a bad taste in their mouth, went to iPhone, and they've been stuck there ever since. First things first, let's talk about the home screen. In 100 years of iPhone, they seriously haven't changed this, which is mind blowing. I can't resize the icons. I can't have blank spaces. No more than four apps in the bottom tray. The list goes on. I want my Android home launcher back. There I can have tons of wide open space, even blank pages. I can have an app drawer where all my apps live, but then give me a home screen where I place just my favorite apps that I access most often. And let me make the icon super tiny if I wanna squeeze a million on screen, and then remove the text, plus add custom widgets right there at my fingertips, like a scrolling calendar feed, or even my SmartThings quick routines, fast and instant to tap. 
There's Quick Dialer, an Evernote Gmail feed, weather forecast. The amount of widgets right there on the home screen is unlimited. With a custom home launcher like I'm using Nova, there's almost infinite amount of customization and design choices. Just look at this, gestures and inputs. I can swipe down anywhere on the home screen and expand the quick settings. Swipe up reveals my app drawer. Double tap opens Google Now. It's so nice and I miss these things. I just love these tiny little efficiencies throughout my daily phone usage that I've come to love and miss on an iPhone. The Android notification tray just feels faster and better organized. It's easier to swipe notifications away or quick respond if I want. Clear all is easy peasy and straightforward. On the iPhone, when I hit clear all, only sometimes they all get cleared, but then other times a few are left behind. I've tried to figure this out and it seems kind of confusing. I miss my Google Assistant so much and especially using that OKG OK hot word when the phone screen is off and across the room. I use that like five to 20 times every day. And speaking of screen off, this is an OLED display, right? Why don't they offer us always on screen? That's sort of absurd. And again, iPhone users probably don't know what they're missing out on, but this always on screen with date, time, battery life, notifications, it's so nice to have. You can set it on the table, hands-free and quick glance, so nice. Let's quick cover camera user interface. I really dislike this scrolling through from photo, video, time-lapse. It's pretty inefficient. Now sadly, Pixel and a few others are switching over to this design, I'm not sure why, but fortunately there's others like the LG lineup where you can photo or video from the same screen or single tap and change all your camera modes and settings. It's so nice. Another camera example that literally happens to me every other day. If I'm filming on the iPhone 4K 30, let's say, and I need to quick switch over to 4K 60, that's not a quick toggle in the app like you'd expect. Instead, I have to jump home, then settings, then slide way down a camera, then record video, then toggle the resolution and frame rates, and then switch back to the camera app. This just doesn't make sense. I should be able to quickly and efficiently toggle these sort of settings in the camera app. And this is a constant theme under settings. Why do I always have to go back to the main menu settings for granular app settings? These should all live under that app's umbrella. Here's a funny one. Is there seriously no way to clear all recent apps? You have to one by one flick them away. Android has had this for years. So we could go on and on about the pros and cons of each side, but I think I just missed that power and customization on that Android ecosystem. By all means, Apple and iPhone, they used to really innovate and push the bounds. They set the bar way high back in the day. But then over years and years, I'm not sure why, maybe complacency, Android caught up and then passed them by in my opinion. Let's say you're on a tight budget and you need a smartphone. Well, you could go out and buy an okay Android device for like one or 200 bucks. I'm thinking that Moto lineup and many other options. Or if you want a flagship, top tier, best of the best specs and features out there, well then you could spend a thousand bucks plus on a Galaxy or a Pixel. And then there's limitless options in between. Again, that constant theme is repeated. Open, limitless customization and freedom on the Android side. iPhone, iOS is just too locked down for me. Now yes, the Mac and iPhone and Apple ecosystem, they work very well together. But if you wanna explore outside those bounds, things are gonna get a little rough for you. Now I'm not into judging blue or green chat bubbles. You choose whatever works best for you. Let's leave this an open discussion. I wanna hear your thoughts down in the comments. Do you love iPhone or Android? And give me your reasons why. Have you ever switched from one to the other? And then did you have to switch back? Or what were your thoughts? The beauty and fun in all this tech is that it could change like that. Let's see what the future holds. If you're new around here and you wanna see where I pop my SIM into next, maybe the V40 or the 6T or something else, consider subscribing for more tech videos posted every single week. Until next time, let's live authentic.